Little Lavender was a uh, phase three randomized placebo control trial conducted here in the US in girls with Rett syndrome age five to 20. Uh, we enrolled 187 patients and they're randomized. Half of them received trifinitide and half of them received placebo. Uh, trifinitide is an oral medication. It's a liquid that the uh, patients in the trial drank twice a day in the morning and the night. Um, we followed those patients for 12 weeks in the trial, and the, we um, sort of had a daunting task in that we had co-primary endpoints, which is what the FDA had asked for for this trial. One of the co-primary endpoints was something called the RSBQ, or the Rett Syndrome Behavioral Questionnaire. And this is a questionnaire that the primary caregiver fills out about the girls uh, in the trial, and it really asks questions about all of the core symptom, symptoms of Rett syndrome. The second key primary endpoint was um, an assessment made by the investigator in the trial, um, and it was something called the CGII, or the Clinician Global Improvement Scale, and they were asked to rate whether the patients worsened or got better um, thinking about the core features of Rett syndrome as they did that. And we're very uh, happy and pleased that the trial was positive for both of these key primary endpoints. I think that's really powerful because it indicates both the caregivers and the investigators were seeing significant improvement in these core symptoms of Rett syndrome for the girls in the trial. Um, so we saw um, for the RSPQ, we saw a significant improvement over baseline at 12 weeks. Um, <clears throat> and the size of the improvement was about five points compared to placebo, which is considered clinically significant. Uh, I think most clinicians point to a, a point change of three or four points of being clinically significant. So we definitely met that. Um, and then the second, uh, the CGI is just rating improvement compared to baseline. And there again, we saw a statistical significance on that endpoint. Um, I do want to add that we had a very interesting key secondary endpoint that was also statistically significant and positive in the trial. Um, it's a measurement uh, performed by the caregivers of how well uh, their daughters communicate. Um, using mostly social communication. And uh, communication is really important in this syndrome. As I mentioned, the patients lose the ability to communicate both verbally and non-verbally. And what uh, caregivers talk about a lot is they feel like their daughters are trapped inside their own body, that they're thinking that they're wanting to communicate but unable to do so. And this is one of the key symptoms of the disease that uh, caregivers point to in their wish for improvement if there was an effective treatment. So I think it was really notable that we also saw improvement and statistical significance on this key secondary endpoint, um, which is a rating of the patient's ability to communicate non-verbally. Yep. So um, next steps are we're looking forward to filing a um, application for approval or an NDA with the FDA around the middle of this year. Um, we are having what's called a pre-NDA meeting with the FDA in the first quarter. Um, we've had very good interactions with the FDA to this point about trifinitide in the program. So this is sort of a checkbox exercise where we get everything lined up and then we expect to file in the middle of the year. Um, we do get, being a rare pediatric disease, we would expect a um, quicker review. So we'd expect to hear back from the FDA very early in 2023 about approval um, if successful.